the Jones Seminar. Uh, tonight we have one of our own illustrious faculty members. Very happy to introduce Elsa Garmeyer. Elsa is presently the Sidney E. Jenkins 1887 <coughs> professor here at Thayer School. She received her AB at Harvard and her PhD in physics at MIT and was a postdoc at Caltech. Before coming to Thayer, she was the Hogue Professor in Electrical Engineering at the University of Southern California. She's a member of the National Academy of Engineering, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and she's a fellow of IEEE, the American Physical Society, the Optical Society of America, and the Society of Women Engineers, as well as an honorary member of Phi Beta Kappa. She was president of the Optical Society of America. She's been a Fulbright scholar in Australia and has been invited as a visiting scientist to Great Britain, France, Brazil, Japan, Japan China, Taiwan, Germany, and South Africa. And building upon this international experience, uh, she spent 2007 to 2008 as a Jeff Jefferson Science Fellow offering technical consultation on telecommunications to the US Department of State. And she, in that role, contributed to numerous international projects. And today she's going to tell us about her sabbatical. Please welcome Elsa. Nice to see you here. Now that I've spent a year in Washington, I'm about to give a talk that doesn't have a single equation in it. That's, <laughs> that's not a talk I'm familiar with. A lot of words and I'm happy to know. All about. I was a Jefferson Fellow at the Department of State, and it's considered a relatively honorific. Uh, there were a number of us, and you'll see them in the next slides, and we went to Washington not knowing what we'd be doing or where we'd be living. A little like graduate students, right? Coming off to graduate school. Um, we were given opportunities in a lot of places, and we got to look around and pick where we wanted Again, it's quite similar to what we do with graduate students. And I decided ultimately in telecommunications policy, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. But I thought I'd show you illustrious group there with the um, Secretary of State was <laughs> and, uh, but the reality was we ended up really sort of feet on the ground looking individual. Why were we there? The idea was to offer technical on important issues. The feeling is that the State Department does not have a lot of technical and a lot of issues in international, the international arena involve a great deal of technology and engineers that can help. Uh, specifically what I did and what I did is work the electromagnetic spectrum and how it gets allocated for various applications, uh, working on satellite orbits and how they get allocated, uh, telecommunication cables going under the sea are important and have to be. We also have countries to help them expand their telecommunications and working on policy that uh, I will in our office where I did less and supporting internet security and safety and I hope to get to those. One of the things that group is that I would ambassador in who had worked pain of a book the Supreme Court, I think, or at least involved that would say received was a question. Plugged into this community, he had started a company called Air Touch, which uh, was an important early telecommunications co company. So he was a real expert, and he was also a really nice. And he really 
engineering because his father was dean of engineering in Columbia. So I'm showing you his because I got pretty well. Uh, these are words on the website. What did we do? Policy development and negotiation world. term for see that it sounds pretty pro business and sure enough located in the by the way it's been renamed pro of energy business since the title of every part of the state <laughs> how are we organized we're I got it. India. That's several weeks. Remember it. You. Communications Union. I also went to an OECD meeting, which was. The th they dealt with satellites and the internet from a more technical point of view and I was in that group although I did a lot of work with the other groups as well. So the first thing that, that I got a chance to do and, and my Russell who's here came along with me in, in Geneva. We were there for three weeks. So our it's commonly called the work. Uh, it's the radio, World Radio Conference, and the idea is that the electromagnetic spectrum is indeed a finite resource. There's only so many cycles between DC and daylight, and that cycles have to be divided up by whatever are needed, and that's argued worldwide. There's an effort to try to make the world all agree on what the spectrum should be which I'm showing pictures of, the, the room looked very much like a United Nations that you've seen so with people sitting there and reading, um, uh, listening in earphones to the language that they uh, could understand. There were six languages. Let's see if I can remember them all. English, Spanish, French because it's in Geneva, Chinese, Arabic, Russian. Russian, thank you. Yes, so not German, not Japanese, those were all very good English speakers. Now, I show this because this is the issue and I don't expect you to read it. At the bottom is some of the spectrum division, we'll, I'll show you a little more of that in a minute. But here is what the stakeholders are for the spectrum is designed, divided up into frequencies for all of these folks. And some of them surprised me. Amateurs, they need their own frequencies. Uh, radio location is radar. Uh, there's the radio astronomers have a separate band where their wavelengths they care about are protected. Uh, anybody interested in any of this can obviously look at it in detail. Here's an example of the United Nations or the uh, internationally agreed upon spectrum allocation as the United States sees it from 300 megahertz to th 3 gigahertz. So that's just the sort of useful communication band. And I'm only pointing out a couple of things. You probably can't see it all that well. Uh, but the broadcasting bands are very wide. This is the bands where that they're actually going to divide up into smaller bands because this is for television, the um, analog television. And the digital television is designed to use a lot less of this bandwidth, offering new frequencies for cell phones and, and uh, mobile internet. Uh, I also marked aeronautical because that's how uh, airplanes communicate and that's pretty important. 